This is Hashtag Finance, presented to you by the Canadian Securities Exchange, the exchange for entrepreneurs, with your host, Philip Shum. Hi, it's Philip Shum uh, from the CSC. It, we are doing another Hashtag Finance uh, podcast. Thanks for watching. I'm here today with Charlie In, who is from Raffles Financial Group. He's the chairman. Uh, the ticker is CSE, uh, R-I-C-H, that is rich. Um, welcome, Charlie. How are you? Thank you, Philip. Thanks. Thanks for welcome. And, and you're in Singapore right now, but uh, I'm wondering if you can tell us a bit about Raffles Financial and what your company does. Um, Raffles Financial is uh, headquartered in Singapore, serving clients all in Asia, in particularly uh, those from China and Southeast Asia. Um, Raffles Financial provides uh, IPO arrangement, um, advisory, and uh, anchor investors uh, services. So in other words, uh, clients who seek a, a public listing on some of the major stock exchanges, uh, our job is to advise them on the way forward on how to get it done. And at the same time, um, help them in certain areas such as investor relations and sometimes in fundraising as well. And uh, so the majority of the clients that you have are Asia-based or uh, opportunities that are looking to get listed on major exchanges. So um, how, is, how do you work with these guys? And, and uh, in terms of like your, your revenue model, I guess you take a fee uh, off the services that you provide? Yes, uh, in our uh, formative years, um, we would provide what we call corporate finance advisory and restructuring services. So first of all, we look at the clients and we advise them what's the best way forward uh, in order that it can be compliant to the listing requirements of the various stock exchanges. And then we would uh, restructure their companies, uh, find international headquarters for them, then um, do the necessary um, uh, audits, accounting, uh, standards that can be compliance to international financial reporting standards and finally um, help to set up um, uh, subsidiaries in the respective uh, areas of operations so that we can extract the businesses and the profits into their international uh, headquarters uh, which will, will become their listing entities oh that's great uh, so moving forward what is your plan to uh, to grow out this business you see, um, as, as, this, um, as of now, we find that there are not uh, a single investment banking uh, service provider that are willing to train, inverted comma, outsiders or uh, representatives that's going to work with you. So in the whole Asia Pacific region, the market for financial advisory services is something like uh, 15 billion. So therefore, we, we as a company, or for that matter, any investment banks uh, are unable to service that wide range or deep, um, uh, extensive client base in the whole Asia Pacific region. So therefore, the only way out for us to grow and expand, it is to do some form of um, licensing. In other words, we will have to go and search out representatives that we could train, we could access, we can train them on the job, and most important of all, we have to accredit them so that we can quality control and check the performance. So in summary, we have to find representatives in each of these key provinces in Asia Pacific, train the people, and then get them to serve their clients, especially their local clients, so that they could bring all these clients out into the international uh, stock markets and get themselves listed. So that is our growth and expansion strategy. Uh, we are not capital intensive but we are not labor intensive, but we definitely are talent intensive. So therefore, the only way out is that you could not possibly employ them. So the way to go forward is to license them, is to train them, educate them, uh, examine them, and quality control them so that they can deliver the kind of service and the standards uh, to those clients who expect. So in other words, at the, at the HQ level, Raffles will contain, will have all the various uh, domains or specialists in tax, in finance, in legal, and everything that you need to go for a public listing. And they were able to draw on all these resources and so that they can serve their local clients. So that is the best. And with the COVID-19, we find that uh, everybody is willing to come onto Zoom, come onto WeChat, come into 
into mm -hmm. all the various um, uh, <clears throat> uh, video-based uh, technologies that we can train people. We could see client. Uh, at the same time, we could also allow the client to, to bring us into the factories, into their offices, without mm -hmm. even for us to fly over there. So it really helps a lot with the COVID-19. And, and we believe that the way to grow is by uh, appointing representatives in some of the key provinces in whole of Asia. Yeah, and that really sounds like uh, very much like a, a sales model where, where you employ these individuals, train them, get them up and running, uh, let them understand the types of things that you're looking for, and then respectively have these individuals uh, act as sales agents for you uh, in many ways. Um, yeah. Because you, 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 from your end, you centralize all your services in Singapore, as you mentioned. Um, well, we have uh, essentially three key centers in the Asia Pacific region. Um, Singapore being the, the leading Asia Pacific uh, financial hub. So we have all our people over there. But um, prior to, to 2020, beginning of this year, uh, we will we are based out in Hong Kong. So uh, at this moment, we still have a skeleton force in Hong Kong with our finance team, with our legal team, with our valuation team. And of course, in China, we, at Shanghai and Beijing, we have our own uh, Chinese team uh, with a hands-on uh, to the market there to serve the clients there. So, so at this present moment, we are here. But not forgetting, uh, we, we started off life in, in, in Australia, in Sydney. So, so we have a, a fair bit of um, uh, resources down in Sydney as well. And as we speak right now, we are establishing uh, two important centers. Uh, one is in Japan. So suddenly, uh, the Japanese uh, government with the six trillion uh, US dollar worth of, uh, of quantitative easing, we find that there are a lot of opportunity for Japanese firms to move south, south of Asia. And, and the Japanese government do not want to have over-reliance on the China market as their outsourced partner or as their resources suppliers. So they want them to move out to Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand, the Indochina, such as Laos, Cambodia. So, so suddenly, you know, the, the, the Raffles financial uh, businesses um, grow and, and, and there are a lot of inquiries on, on Japanese firms on how could they get their businesses uh, set up in Southeast Asia and how do they uh, get themselves listed in some of the Southeast Asian stock exchanges and raise the money uh, from there uh, while, they, while they do most of the businesses dealings in Southeast Asia rather than over relying on the Japanese stock market uh, of which they find uh, a lot of a difficulty in getting themselves listed over there. Okay, so you, you've got presence in a few Asian countries. So then the next question is, is that why did you come to list in Canada then? Uh, Canada is a very unique situation because um, uh, we, we, we have a representative uh, that is based out in Silicon Valley. And one day he, he called me out. He said, oh, look here, no, we have a Canadian uh, company on CSE that's available for, for, for some restructuring and some collaboration. I said, look here, why not? So because at Raffles, our belief is that uh, in order to be successful, uh, you've got to list. You list to be successful. Whereas a lot of people's the mindset, a myth, is that uh, when you are successful, then you list. So our, our reasoning is there's no logic in it because uh, you, you've got to get yourself listed, raise the money that you need so that you can become successful. So therefore, we use CSE as a test bit because when I look at the the... the the, the tech line on CSE is an exchange for entrepreneurs. So yeah, bingo. All right, so let us do a, a, a concept test on the CSE and see whether how fast and how quickly and how easy we can get ourselves listed onto, onto CSE. And, and of course, uh, it is not a, a, a walk in the park, but you still have a lot of challenges. But having said that, relative to some of the other stock exchanges around the world, uh, CSE is still a much... Uh, uh, easy and more friendly exchange. So we got ourselves listed there. And, and when we got listed on CSE, I was uh, so pleasantly surprised when you mentioned to me that we could be possibly uh, invited on the, on the CSE 25. And when I start to check it out and say, Whoo, I never realized that we are ranked number, number seven, number six uh, on, on, the, on the CSE. And those guys above me uh, are people who are in the, in, the, in the pharmaceutical business, in the cannabis business. So, so we tell ourselves that, wow, you know, in the diversified uh, industry sector, we are, we, are, we are ranked number one. So therefore, if we work a little bit harder in the next three years 
and make ourselves maybe a, become a billion dollar company. We could, who knows? We could be ranked number three, number two on, on CSE. So, so we like the opportunity and, and I tell ourselves that maybe this is a very good place uh, for us to make it a home. Yeah, and we uh, certainly appreciate you uh, you getting listed with us. Uh, certainly, uh, as you know, as we've said before, uh, we are here to help uh, our clients. And certainly, if uh, if you need help for whatever reason, introductions or whatever, um, or help with uh, other corporate development facets, we are here. Um, Thank you. So let's let's maybe try to transition over to the U.S. at this point. So, uh, mm -hmm. what are your plans to do in the U.S.? So there are, there are clients and there are investors around the world have requested us and see whether could we have a, a dual listing uh, in, the, in the US. And of course, uh, a lot of people prompt to us um, the opportunities that uh, present itself. And currently, uh, we are quite happy to have a, um, a, a listing of, uh, on the OTC, QX, or even on the pink um, the, for, the, for the interim period. So, so we reckon that the moment we hit uh, half a half a half a billion or a billion dollar market cap, uh, we would we would have to really um, relook at uh, where the investors are and uh, where would they like us to be. But having said that, your home base is important. So because all the regulation requirement, the compliance requirements, and the ease of all these things, and of course we would like to go to a place that is uh, easy for us rather than uh, more complicated for us. So so therefore, having said that. We are quite happy that we are listed on CSE. We got um, listings on on OTC. We have listing on the Frankfurt Exchange. So so um, so basically, on CSE, you become a global uh, listed uh, entity. Great, thank you. Um, so recently, I believe you you listed on May eleventh, twenty twenty, and on that day, you had a major announcement with BMO. Uh, and uh, since then, you've had some recent announcements with uh, Red Oak Capital. Uh, I'm wondering if you can elaborate on those relationships and what that significance is for, for Raffles. You see, when clients come to us, uh, we start off in a relationship as an advisor to the public listing. But you and I know that uh, public listing is only uh, the, the very first step of a long journey in one's uh, family, in building up one's wealth. So. So we, we come from a background of a wealth and uh, financial planning background. So therefore, um, with the bank relationship, we're able to provide our client with a full suite of banking services, right from investment banking and slowly moving backwards to private banking and to custodian banking. So, so that we can give our client a complete uh, solution in their financial uh, planning requirements. So, so I give an example. So, uh, today, example, Philip, you come to me and said, I want to list my company. Fine, you know, you, you list your company and after listing your company, you need to grow and expand your company. You need to do your M&A and so forth. Then after that, you, 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 need to, um, you, you need to grow in your market capitalization. So, and once your market capitalization goes up, there'll be a lot of people offering you all kinds of deals to mm -hmm. ask you to pledge your shares, to ask you to, to, to borrow money and etc. And so forth. And sometimes the entrepreneur go wow on that. And, and we have a lot of cases where entrepreneurs fail as a result. They do not manage their uh, newfound wealth, so to speak. So therefore, we help our clients to set up family trust. And mm -hmm. being based out in Singapore, Singapore's uh, government and regime has a very unique taxation arrangement. So if you, if you were to set up a family trust, if you have uh, qualified with all the things that the Monetary Authority of Singapore uh, require, you enjoy uh, taxation advantages. You enjoy dividend tax-free. You enjoy capital gain tax-free. And, and you, you, you can have a very interesting uh, fund management or, or an investment uh, vehicle uh, structure whereby uh, you, you can enjoy uh, all kinds of uh, benefits that the Singapore government or Singapore Monetary Authority would accord to you. So therefore, we, we, we start off from IPO to m a to market uh, financial corporate finance uh, advisory then we look at family trust so so if someone come to us we say that you start off from ipo then you could land it up in us managing your family's wealth your family trust and even up to uh, your insurance requirement your risk mitigation strategies mm -hmm. the whole suite of solutions so so that is where the bank comes in 
And being listed in, 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 in Canada, it is vital for us to find a, 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 a few hundred year old bank that is uh, strong and with strong AUM and, and there is also going places in Asia Pacific. So we said, let's hold hands together and grow this business. No, that's great. That, and those are some tier one potential uh, partners that you have. So that was uh, really, really nice to see. Um, and so now let's, let's kind of talk about your, your, uh, your company in terms of the shareholders. Like who are the, sh the major shareholders at Raffles? So Raffles, the original, uh, rather um, um, our current um, listing entity, uh, used to call Explorex, and they have many, many uh, uh, Canadian shareholders. So we are very happy that they welcome us uh, into the, this big family. And, and, and we also brought in some new uh, shareholders into the company. Example, mm -hmm. we have the four uh, big stockbroking firms from, from China, uh, Citic Securities, Ping An Securities, uh, Hai Tong, and finally China Securities. All these four are what we call the four big uh, titans of the Chinese uh, stock markets. So, so they, they, they subscribe to, to our IPO or to our placement shares and they are having a watching brief on how are we performing in this market. And at the same time, they also serve as our eyes and ears uh, of clients who would like to go to this part of the world or mm -hmm. uh, want to list outside of China. So in other words, they are also shareholders. They are also... Uh, partners of some sorts. So, so that is the advantage. And, and other than that, we, our major shareholders are myself, Victor, and, and Abigail. So three of us would uh, have about nearly 80, 80, 85% of the total number of shares in the, in the company. So we are all executives. We are all uh, working very hard to, to mm -hmm. make sure that uh, Raffles Financial deliver uh, profits uh, with exponential growth every year. Right. Okay. So it sounds like with those Chinese uh, securities companies, uh, you essentially have become their cross-border uh, opportunity because uh, at, at the same time, you're working on a lot of cross-border opportunities here. So it, it looks like a very strategic relationship for you. Um, so maybe tell me a bit more about your, your background uh, as, as, as chairman and then some of your management team's uh, background as well. Yeah. Um, I personally spent um, my first 20 years of my life uh, in, in, uh, in consulting and at the same time, in also um, having some, some form of learning curve in the area of uh, investments. So my first 20 years is essentially uh, giving advice to various type of uh, companies. But at that, at that stage, my advice were more to MNCs, big companies, um, uh, that was the first 20 years. And I also serve as an adjunct professor in some of the universities as well. So for the last 20 years. And then the next chapter of my 20 years in year 2000, I enter uh, into the Asian Pacific market where we start to invest uh, on our own money. And once you invest, the only way to, to, to reap your profit, so to speak, you need to find exits and the public listing is one of the way. So therefore, I'm responsible to invest and to exit uh, and this exit is via to the uh, IPO process. So I start to uh, fine tune, start to learn how do we do our IPOs. And then after some time later, and some of my younger partners come to me and say, since you have that uh, wealth of experience and the resources, why don't we form up a company just to do this? And they say, yeah, why not? So uh, two years ago, uh, we decided uh, to put our resources together and, and mind you, my partners are half my age, you know, so most of them uh, are, are very, very young. So uh, Victor runs the Chinese operation. Abigail runs the, the investment uh, part. So, so therefore, uh, our core team, and then we have a, a very young uh, finance person, uh, have about 12 to 15 years of experience. So he runs the, 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 the financial modeling uh, section. And then, of course, we have a lot of other colleagues in, 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 in China, in Hong Kong, in Singapore, there's a various uh, experience set. So, and at the same time, they're also uh, shareholders of the company. Okay, great. Uh, and then, so moving forward, um, if investors are interested in Raffles Financial, uh, can you give us a bit about like uh, the types of things that you would be looking, they, would, they should expect in the next few months? 
I, I think the more important thing as a result of the current um, exuberance of the market, um, there are companies there that keep on growing and expanding with a huge market cap. And the real thing to watch out for is uh, are these companies are paying dividends. So because if companies are not paying dividends, apparently they are taking your money and to do something. And to do something, then of course we have to really look at their return on investments. So at Raffles Financial, uh, our philosophy is that we run on a very tight ship. So we run on very low cost. So we say that we have a dividend policy that is, um, in the past we say we have minimum 75% of our profits will be declared as dividends because we as uh, shareholders, we as partners, uh, do not draw very big, big salary. We just draw subsistence uh, uh, kind of salary so that we can keep on going. But the real thing is that we rely on dividends. So we declare a huge dividends on our net profits of the tax. So that is one important thing. The second important thing is that Raffles and uh, we believe that the way to grow and expand is not only to provide a range of integrated solutions of services, but it's important for us to have uh, like-minded people that can add value to clients. Uh, and these like-minded people must not, must not only be capable in, in, in explaining and persuading clients when they should come with us, but at the same time, they, they, they must be technically competent to be able to advise the client what's the best way uh, and the shortest way and the cheapest way to get yourself listed and to raise the kind of money that you need for your public listing. So, so therefore, uh, our growth and expansion strategy, it is to grow, excuse me, um, is to grow what we call the regional representatives in all the various provinces that we think that in Asia Pacific will be the growing area. Okay, uh, and so uh, moving forward, how do, how do people keep abreast of Raffles Financial? Um, first of all, Raffles Financial, we have a website, uh, rafflesfinancial.co, yeah? rafflesfinancial.co.co. Um, we, we, we have a bulletin that comes up, uh, IR in, in Canada uh, delivers a bulletin regularly. And of course, uh, we keep our shareholders on, on, a, on a database. So with the permission, we will send them regular updates. Um, at the same time, we, we, we try to um, keep our shareholders duly informed. So we, we have all the necessary disclosures and announcements. So, and on, on top of that, um, we, we also from time to time run the various um, uh, seminars, workshops, uh, so that we can keep all our clients and call all our shareholders abreast of the latest development in the world of uh, finance. Yeah. Okay, so uh, thanks very much for your time, Charlie. Uh, once again, it's uh, Philip Shum here from the CSC. I'm the Director of Listings Development based here in Toronto. Uh, this is Charlie In, who is the Chairman of Raffles Financial Group. Uh, the ticker symbol is R-I-C-H, that is rich, and it's listed on the CSC in Toronto, Canada. Uh, for similar videos uh, to this, this hashtag uh, podcast, uh, please subscribe, um, you know, and uh, it'll get delivered right to your mailbox. In the meanwhile, thank you very much for your time. We look forward to keeping abreast of uh, your progress, Charlie. Thanks again. Thank you, Philip. Thanks a lot. Thanks, everybody. Cheers. Mm -hmm.